chapter number six, seven things that God hates is my subject tonight. And we begin reading in verse 16 of the seventh chapter of Proverbs. The Bible says, these six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift, in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Now stop there. In reading and studying the word of God, I'm sure you're like I am. We have a tendency to turn to the passages of scriptures that brings comfort and encouragement to our hearts. Sometimes, however, it is necessary to turn to those portions which minister reproof and correction and instruction in righteousness like where Paul said uh, to uh, Timothy in chapter 3 and verse number 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or the child of God or a member of the family of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. These verses before us uh, do this very thing that Paul was writing about to Timothy. They bring before us a kind of teaching uh, we are always needing. Before examining these seven uh, sins that God hates, let me just give three observations about this portion of Scripture in particular. First of all, these verses clearly emphasize moral harborless uh, of a human heart and of the world in which we live. We live in a horrible world and our hearts are Hideous, the seven evils mentioned here abound on every hand. These verses declare the depravity of the human heart, the depravity of the human race. This is not popular. It's not a popular subject. And in many quarters, It is not even observed, not even preached, or even believed. But whether men believe that the human race is depraved or not, it does not alter the fact. It is all to, uh, when we think about it, it is all too apparent as we watch the trends of literature, the programs on radio, 
things are being printed and published and said on radio and TV that years ago uh, they would have been locked up and put in jail for the kind of pictures and plays of which are advertised by Cinemax and the theaters are unbelievable in this day. Wherever we look, we see the exceeding sinfulness of sin in Isaiah chapter number one. The Bible says, why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The human heart faint from the sole of the foot even to the head. There is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mortified uh, with ointment. Isaiah chapter 1 verses five and six. When you think about it, Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? How great is the moral hideousness of the human heart. And then, These verses before us also remind us of the immaculate holiness and the purity of God and of his hatred of sin. Now, these are seven sins which God hates and they are called abominations. How much does God hate sin, preacher Sturgill? Well, in the former dispensation, God hated sin so much that he destroyed almost all of the human race because of sin. He destroyed almost all the human race uh, that he himself had created. You read about it in Genesis chapter 6. But to find out how much God hates sin, all you have to do is look at Calvary and remind ourselves uh, that so great was the divine hatred of sin uh, that God actually surrendered his own son to the fearful suffering and anguish of a Roman gibbet or a cross in order that he might once and for all be uh, dealt with sin and sin be put away. Paul said it like this, and uh, uh, being found uh, in the fashion of a man He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. How holy God is and how much he hates sin. Then let me say these verses also reminds us uh, that the true ambition and the desire of God's people ought to be should be to live without these offensive sins before which God hates. We should live a life without those sins in our lives. And thank God it is possible to live a life that is pleasing to him. As a matter of fact, he has provided victory over all the things uh, uh, that grieves the very heart of God. 
We are to be a different people. And thank God we may be. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 and verse 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And Paul said in Ephesians 4 and verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, when we, uh, what then are the seven things which God himself hates? You'll notice here, and let's look at them and, and we'll place beside them a thing that God loves. The first one he mentions here is a haughty bearing. He says a proud look. Now pride is the primary sin. James said, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. It was through pride that the devil fell. What an insidious thing pride is. That is why the apostle Peter uh, speaks about the virtue of humanity when he said in 1 Peter chapter 3, and uh, verse four, uh, but let it be the hidden manner of the heart uh, that which is not uh, uh, con, uh, 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 corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, uh, which is uh, in the sight of God of great price. And in chapter five of the same epistle, in verse five, he says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. Remember what the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew 11 and verse 29 and 30. He said, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So God hates a haughty bearing. The wise man said a proud look. And then the second thing, notice uh, uh, he hates, uh, is uh, a verbal falsehood. He says a lying tongue. Now, but surely you say preacher Christians don't lie. Unfortunately, sometimes they do. But preacher, surely it is uh, all right to just tell a little white lie, uh, is it? God hates a lying tongue. Be, uh, uh, whether it's White, yellow, red, or black. God hates a lying tongue. But surely, preacher, it's impossible for us to get along in the business world today without occasionally telling a lie. Remember what God says. God hates a lying tongue. And this is why Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians in chapter four and verse 25, he said, wherefore, 
put it away, lying. Speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. I think maybe most of us need to pray what David prayed in Psalm 120 and verse 2 when he said, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. May I hear an amen. Look, uh, uh, he mentions a third sin and that is a heartless cruelty. Hands that shed innocent blood. We quite naturally uh, think about Cain and Abel in connection with the shedding of innocent blood. Sometimes you read the story in Genesis chapter 4 where Adam and Eve came together and they had two boys, Cain and Abel. And one uh, uh, followed the instructions uh, of the, his father and uh, he offered up a lamb which is a perfect type of the suffering of the innocent for the guilty. And uh, God accepted that blood sacrifice, but Cain uh, offered up the fruits of his own hands, his impression to God. Can't get along without me, God. Uh, what I can do and what I'll do. And uh, I mean, look what I have done. And he brought the fruit of his hands. Well, God rejected that just like he'll reject our, but he'll look at the blood and that makes all the difference in the world. And then in the New Testament, we're told about Cain who shed innocent blood when he killed Abel. Let's just turn over there and look at it in 1 John uh, chapter number three, the Bible tells us uh, in verse three, the Bible says, and every man, uh, 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 verse number 11, uh, 1 John chapter three, verse 11, for this is the message that uh, ye have heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Look at verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Oh, do you hate anyone? You know what God says? Then in God's sight, you're a murderer. And God hates murderers. Notice the fourth wicked sin that God hates. And that is a vicious scheming, he says, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Here we're reminded of the source of evil. Where does it uh, have its source, preacher Sturgill? Where does it begin, on the outside or the inside? Well, it begins on the inside. Jesus said uh, uh, about this matter in Matthew chapter 15 and verses 18 and 19, but these things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart that defileth the man, for out of the heart proceedeth 
evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornication, theft, false witness, and blasphemy. I think he covers it all. It comes from within. Someone once said that man is an inventor. As a matter of fact, he's always inventing some evil thing. And how dreadful. Oh, how different it was with Dorcas, whom the Bible says in Acts chapter 9 and verse 36, she was full of good works and arm deeds which she had made and how different it was with Barnabas who said in Acts 11, 24, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and faith and much people was added unto the Lord. And then there is the fifth sin that God hates and that is mischievous earnestness. He says, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Now, this morning I spoke a little bit about the shoes and the feet, but here are feet that not only do mischief, but they run. They're eager to do it. This is the devil's work, for he is, uh, uh, for he it is uh, who goes before, roaring like a lion to devour whom he may. Peter writes about it in chapter five. You see, God hates uh, this mischievous uh, eagerness. What are your feet doing? Think about it. Are they the beautiful feet that Paul writes about? I thought about it in Romans chapter 10 and verse 15 and I always thought that beauty, that preachers are the ones that have beautiful feet. But I got to looking at that verse of scripture in chapter 10 and verse 15 and it's not talking about the preacher but it's talking about uh, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So every one of you can have beautiful feet if you preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I don't care what they say about your feet. You try it and God says you got beautiful feet. Amen. But notice here the sixth sin that God hates and that is social slander. The Bible says a false witness that speaketh lies. Now an old writer has said this is an accursed thing. It works oftentimes by other means than words by a look or a shirk of the shoulder. It levels the poison arrows. It has broken many a virtuous heart and it has stained many a virtuous reputation. It has nodded away many a good name and wrinkled in essence a host of suspiciousness uh, that have gathered around uh, and crushed the most chaste uh, and the most virtuous uh, uh, of mankind. It often works in the dark and generally under the mask of truthfulness uh, and love. God hates slander. He says in Ephesians chapter four, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. 
You know, God says he'll deal with the person that touches his anointed. Oh, my soul. In verse 32 of the fourth chapter, Paul said, And all be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And then he mentions uh, the seventh sin that God hates, uh, and that is uh, a divisive strife. He says, he that soweth discord among the brethren. I suppose the reason the last one is mentioned is perhaps uh, this is the worst of the seven sins uh, that are mentioned. An old writer refers to the man who by uh, tail-bearing, untrue stories, half-truths, subtle insinuations, produces the disruption of friendship and fellowship and the breakup of fellowship And God hates this sin. In Psalm 33, David said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that run down the beard, even to Aaron's beard, that even down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon and as uh, the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commandeth the blessings, uh, even life uh, forevermore. Now, this is a dreadful subject. Uh, I'm blessed to have this larger congregation here tonight after I announced my subject this morning but perhaps it was a needful uh, subject and we must ask ourselves the question, how can we be free from these things which God himself hates and be filled with those things which he loves? We must do three things and I suggest these and I'll be through. First of all, We must be honest with ourselves and honest with God. You have to be honest with yourself. We must let the search light of his word and of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, come to our hearts and reveal to us the things which are displeasing to God. And then we must admit our wrongs and confess our sin and forsake that which grieves the Lord over in 2 Corinthians. In chapter number 7 in verse 1, Paul said, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And then secondly, not only must we be honest with ourselves and with God, we must seek and receive the cleansing of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. Thank God this is available for every saint. And if you're a sinner, never been a saint, it's available for you also. In 1 John uh, chapter 1, and uh, in, uh, I believe it's verse number 7, the Bible says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. So we must seek and receive the cleansing 
of the precious blood of Christ. And then finally, we must rely on the Holy Spirit for victory. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Folk, we're living in a day and age in which the hallmark word to describe this generation is deceitfulness. Sometimes I think the Lord allows me to hang around for a few years just to let others see how much you really love God. If your love is just to have a old timey preacher, then you've missed it. If your love is to get a new preacher and you show your disrespect for the house of God and the preacher you have, uh, it'll show up on you. You see, we got to be honest with ourselves. Got to be honest with God. And then we need to claim the cleansing of the blood of the Lord Jesus. God help us all to be sensitive to his sweet spirit. There's some things that God hates. May God deliver us from every one of them. Amen. Amen. A woman too. Let's bow our heads please for just a moment of prayer. Our heavenly father, we thank you dear Lord for the word of God. We thank you, dear Lord, that it is for our correcting and our instructing in righteousness. And Lord, help us tonight to be delivered from these seven sins which are abomination to you. God, help us to not have a proud look or a lying tongue, or hands that shed innocent blood, oh, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. God delivers. Feet that be swift to run to mischief, oh, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be a, a good witness. And Lord, help us to never be a false witness and speak lies. And oh Lord, may this preacher or may not a soul under the sound of my voice ever be guilty of the worst of all sins that is sowing discord among the brethren. Precious Lord, hear us tonight. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you for hearing and answering prayer. Now speak to every heart in this building. Speak to my own heart. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.